David Amos. I don't want to provoke my honourable friend, the member for North Herefordshire, but I have to say to him, as a member of the Backbench Business Committee, yes. I am Too delighted soon. that we chose this oh. subject to uh, uh, debate. And I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, I've enjoyed the debate, particularly the passion. And it is such a shame that over the years that I've been here, the passion that we've seen demonstrated today on animal welfare issues isn't demonstrated on all animal welfare issues, because if it was, we would have had a much better outcome for God's creatures than we actually have at the moment. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, if you had told me when I spoke on the third reading of the Badger Protection Act, which was piloted by um, the noble Lord Wardergrave, I think I was on the back bench, I think it was in 1992, if you had told me I would now be here supporting uh, the motion tabled by my honourable friend for St Albans about badger culling, I just simply wouldn't have believed it. But I have to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I don't want to antagonise any of my honourable friends uh, who represent farming communities, uh, well, I'm only down. too well aware of the pressures that I'm facing on this side of the House. But I am um, only too well aware that badgers are not warm, cuddly creatures. I'm only too well aware that they can be uh, dangerous when cornered. And uh, that I know there is an argument, but not one for today, Madam Deputy Speaker, that some people claim there are too many badgers, that there are too many foxes. But that's, that's a completely different matter. Representing the urban area that I do of South End West, when I made that speech many years ago to protect badgers, I had no idea how difficult it was to move uh, a set from an urban area to somewhere else. A very, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker is giving the impression she doesn't really welcome uh, intervention, so I'm going to continue with, with my uh, speech. I'm very grateful to my honourable friend. Well, he, he talks about representing an rural, rural uh, urban area. Would he uh, agree to come to Shropshire uh, to meet with our dairy farmers in Shropshire? And he will see that uh, bovine, uh, we have slaughtered more cows this year than last year, up to 2,125. The misery for our farmers is absolutely palpable. Well, I'm trying to keep within my eight or nine minutes. This is like the city of culture views that I had when I had offers from all over the country to visit their constituencies. If I'm able to, I may at some time visit my honourable friend's constituency. But then when I represented Basildon and we had 32 farms in that area, I do have some understanding of the pressures that farmers are under. Now, much of my speech, we probably have all got the same briefings, depending on what side of the argument you have, has already been made. Uh, as we know, Madam Deputy Speaker, there have been two culls and we're now faced with the way forward. Now, I'm not going to get into the argument about this uh, expert panel's report, but apparently it has found that pilot culls have failed in two of the tests uh, that the government has set, and those were of effectiveness of, and humaneness. Again, many honourable members have made those points, so I'm not going to repeat them. But I would say, because we have had different parts of the world touched on, that badgers are a unique species, so when comparisons are made with the possum culls in New Zealand or the culls that occurred in North America, they are actually making comparisons <coughs> that do not take into account the unique culture of the species. It is also it's really like comparing a dog with a whale. Uh, I just don't think those comparisons are real. The pilot cars, as well being seemingly ineffective, were also, as we've heard, Madam Deputy Speaker, very costly. Conducting the monitoring target cars soared, especially when policing costs are taken into account, and that's a very big expense. Preliminary calculations put pilot car costs at over £4,000 per badger killed. I mean, absolutely crazy, over £4,000 per badger killed. It has also been estimated that a total of £10 million has been spent on the colour cars so far, and we uh, live in very challenging times as far as the economy is concerned, and that's a lot of money. Humaneness. Evidence suggests that the adoption of free shooting as a mean to cull badgers did not meet the necessary guidelines which, which have been set. DEFRA 
had set the standard for cars, as 95% of badgers die within five minutes. However, as we've heard already, uh, I believe that the independent experts have found that up to 18% of the badgers exceeded this limit. And according to Natural England, some badgers were often shot in the wrong area of their bodies, which necessitated a secondary shot to kill them. And it is their belief that the monitoring of the culls was woefully inadequate. Of the 41 visits Natural England uh, monitors made, they only witnessed nine badgers killed by controlled shooting. With these concerns in mind, Madam Deputy Speaker, it would be wrong to highlight the issue without putting forward a solution, which is obviously what all honourable members want. And I think badger vaccination uh, should be treated seriously. I believe that using an already licensed injectable vaccine represents a more cost-effective, compassionate and less divisive way of managing infection within badger populations, because I think the House is saying it would be good if we could agree on this matter. This could be implemented by using the existing data which has been provided by Natural England, who have recorded accurate information about the location of badger sets. Therefore, I would argue that badger sets could be successfully um, inoculated by using this information. The speed of vaccination is very important, and it would be disingenuous of me to suggest that the process of vaccination is a quick one. Admittedly, the process would be a gradual one. But vaccinating badgers is a long-term and sustainable way of reducing the prevalence of bovine TB, and that is what the House is clearly coming together to say, that that is what they want to see reduced. Obviously, this inoculation will not... Um, eradicate the badger that carries the disease, only prevent it from spreading it to other badgers. Therefore, those in favour of the badger, badger cull may well argue that, on the face of it, the cull brings a quicker resolution to the problem. But the evidence, Madam Deputy Speaker, suggests that if we want a long-term, sustainable resolution to the problem, then culling is not the answer. There is no doubt that badgers contribute to the cattle TB uh, problem. I understand all of that, and my honourable friends who represented their constituents uh, with their concerns are absolutely right to do so. But the only way to actually manage this problem is, I believe, to vaccinate them. I'm not going to be uh, commenting on matters in Wales. I want to uh, finally make one or two remarks to my honourable friend, the Minister, in commending the Government's investment of a uh, £250 a year to support and encourage badger vaccination using the existing injectable BCG vaccine. I also commend the Department in continuing to invest in further research into cattle vaccination and to press our European partners to reform EU legislation, um, which I know is going to be a very tough task. So finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, I think it is important to note the opposition to the method of culling that was adopted in the recent culls does not mean that those champion vaccination as an alternative are not on the side of farmers or they do not empathise with the emotional and financial implications of losing cattle to TB. The evidence is that we can seriously attempt to reduce TB levels whilst upholding the welfare of the, these unique animals and reducing the spread of TB in farmers' livestock. So I would urge my honourable friend to seriously review the evidence available from the IEP and consider a more effective, compassionate and less costly alternative that serves the interests of farmers as well as meeting ethical standards and clearly what honourable members have demonstrated today, their concern about animal welfare generally. Yeah. Chris Williamson. <coughs>